Hey guys, welcome to Toothism. This is Dr. Ketki. In today's video, we are going to learn the management of impacted canines. We have already covered the classification as well as surgical management of impacted third molars. So do check these videos. The link is here and it's also there in the description. A canine is considered as being impacted if it doesn't erupt even after complete root development or the contralateral tooth is erupted for at least 6 months with complete root formation. Impacted maxillary canines are quite common as you know the most commonly impacted teeth are mandibular third molars. After that it's maxillary canines who have got the second rank in frequency. Impacted maxillary canines affect approximately 2% of the population and the incidence of maxillary canine impaction is about 20 times more than mandibular canine impaction. This condition is twice as common in girls as it is in boys. That's quite unfair, isn't it? In 85% of the cases, they are found palatally and in 15% of the cases, they are in a labial position. Now, we all know that maxillary canines should erupt by age 11 or 12 years and it should erupt before 13.9 years for girls and before 14.6 years for boys. There could be many reasons for the impaction of the maxillary canine. Like insufficient space for eruption is an obvious reason. Genetics also plays a significant role. Studies have shown a higher incidence of palatally impacted canines when there was a missing lateral incisor or when there were peg-shaped lateral incisors. According to guidance theory, the canine erupts along the root of the lateral incisor. So the lateral incisor acts like a guide and if the root of the lateral incisor is absent or malformed then the canine may not erupt as there is no guidance for eruption. Other possible causes are trauma to the anterior maxilla at a young age, pathologic lesions 